wouldn't it be great if we could use the public internet infrastructure like it was our own network? If we could securely send information from a branch office in Tampa, Florida, to a headquarters in New York, then off to a European headquarters in London, and all the while use the public internet for this transport? That's exactly why we are so excited about virtual private networks in ICND. With virtual private networks, we have the ability to utilize that internet infrastructure like it's our own private network. This is so critical because organizations today desperately want to take advantage of the networking data that our corporation has and they want to be able to take advantage of it from anywhere. Maybe a branch office, maybe a small office home office, maybe a mobile teleworker needs to access this information. No matter where we are in the world, we want to be able to seamlessly access the important corporate data that our organization holds. And this is why VPNs are so exciting. Here to tell us more about exactly what a VPN is and the great benefits we get from a VPN, it's our own guest expert, Mr. Mike Vasquez. Let's face it, in today's world, it's not always convenient or even possible to get into the office to complete a task. And there are times when, if we had a solution for remotely accessing the corporate network, we could quickly resolve issues. And while all that convenience is great, security can't be forgotten. VPNs, virtual private networks, do a great job of addressing these issues. VPNs basically connect two locations over a public network, the internet. That might sound a bit worrisome. Public network, is our data safe? Well, it is. The data is encrypted so that prying eyes cannot see what's been transmitted, the P in VPN. What are some of the benefits? Well, the benefits are huge. First, cost savings. It's much cheaper to use your existing internet connection than to add point-to-point -point solutions between locations. WAN links and modem banks can be expensive and add to administrative overhead. Because VPNs have built-in security for authentication and encryption, your information is secure. VPN technology makes use of strong encryption algorithms that make your data impossible to read if captured by the bad guys. In addition, there are multiple authentication methods, and this allows you to custom fit a VPN solution with the security level that you require. And think about the infrastructure that you're using with the VPN. In large part, it belongs to your ISP and the ISPs of your users. This scalability reduces your cost of infrastructure deployment, which is another benefit. And finally, what's really made this such a wonderful workable solution? Broadband technology. With broadband technology all over, airports, Starbucks, our homes, the speeds of the connections are good and always improving, which means productivity can remain high and the workforce is ever more mobile. Let's face it, in today's world... Now, as a CCNA student, you should be aware that VPNs tend to come in two rather generic forms. What we call site-to-site -site VPNs and what we call remote access VPNs. A site-to-site, -site, we're really trying to simulate a wide area network connection, a classic WAN. We're trying to have a situation where the VPN connection is always up, like a leased line from an internet service provider would be. But in a remote access VPN, we're dealing with more of a traditional kind of dial-up like structure. The mobile user, the telecommuter, or the person just running around with their laptop, they establish a VPN connection just for a short period of time while they need to access information from, let's say, the corporate headquarters. And then when they're done with that VPN connection, they tear it down. So notice we're dealing with a situation where we're either having a connection that's always up, always on, simulating a WAN, or more of an on-demand type remote access VPN situation. 
Now, Cisco is aware that every company today is going to want to take advantage of VPN services. So they're building in what they call easy VPN software into their routers and switches these days. That's right, just about any of the Cisco routers sold today have an easy VPN feature for you to establish VPN uh, functionality and connectivity. In fact, Cisco even has a web VPN product. Here, all the user has to do is fire open a web browser like Internet Explorer and they can access a VPN connection via the web browser. So how's that? No special software required, just a simple web browser in order to make the connection to maybe a Cisco router functioning with the VPN software. So it's typical that we have either routers or VPN software packages making up the server and the client components in our VPN infrastructure. So again, Cisco routers being the VPN endpoints or Cisco routers working in conjunction with software. We call the software typically the VPN client and we typically use the routers for the VPN servers. But keep in mind there are variations on this concept. As a matter of fact, here we see Cisco adaptive security appliances, Cisco firewalls making the router connectivity and then we can see one remote user using software only. Certainly where we end up having the most variation in our VPN is with our clients. Here to talk to us more about our VPN clients is Mike Vasquez. Deploying a VPN server is only like half the job and no one gets a raise for doing only half the job. Well, at least not me. So right, you guessed it, VPN clients, that's the second half. Remote locations or remote employees need a way to connect, and we have four options for our IPsec VPN clients, each fitting a particular need. Take, for example, your mobile client. If they're running a Windows Mobile or Palm OS on their PDA, they can use the Certicom client. This enables those employees to access email or CRM tools via a secure connection from their handheld device to the corporate network. Now, your PC and laptop users will employ Cisco VPN client software. This software can be centrally managed with security policies deployed via a central location. And we all love that centralized administration option, definitely a bonus. For remote users at a home office or branch office, check out the Cisco Remote Router VPN client. I like this because there's nothing that users at the remote location need to do. The remote router VPN client establishes the necessary tunnel and devices can talk to each other without the need to change settings on any of those remote computers. Very clean solution and a great option for small branch offices and home offices. And you may have heard of a company called Apple and a device like the iPad or iPhone might ring a bell. Can they connect? Absolutely. The Cisco AnyConnect VPN client is your solution here. And AnyConnect is flexible enough to go wherever you have Java or ActiveX support. So Vista, Linux, Mac, OS X, you name it, AnyConnect gives you the flexibility to work on the widest variety of clients of any of the four VPN client options. Deploying a VPN server is VPN server. Well, great stuff, Mike. Thank you so much. Now, understand that there is going to have to be technology behind the scenes making all of this possible and that is the case with virtual private networks and the technology that makes it all possible for us folks is none other than IPsec. IPsec, short for IP security, is the actual set of technologies that's occurring behind the scenes so that we have confidentiality so that no one is spying, no one is reading the information that we're sending from one point in the wide area network to the other. Encryption is done thanks to an encryption algorithm and a decryption algorithm. So here we can see Gale is encrypting information so it can't be read, sending it over the internet to Jeremy who is decrypting the information. 
In VPN technologies today, we can have the same key used for encryption and decryption, or under some asymmetric algorithms, we can have the different key used for encryption than decryption. Think about this. If you're using a symmetric algorithm, how are you going to educate the person that you want to speak with about what the key is? How are you going to pull this off? Well, the IPsec suite of protocols even accommodates for that. There is something called the Diffie-Hellman key exchange, which allows us to set up a secure enough tunnel for the encryption key exchange. So we even have a way that we can exchange the key used for encryption and decryption over the public internet safely and securely. Something else that IPsec gives us is data integrity. With data integrity, we ensure that the information is not changed as it is sent over the internet. But you know the last ingredient that IPsec needs to help us with in a VPN? It's authentication. How are we ensured that we are speaking with the correct entity that we want to be speaking with? Here to tell us more about that is Dual CCIE, Ed Yanez. Authentication. When conducting business long distance, it's vital to know who is really at the other end of the phone, email, or fax. The same is true of VPN networking. The device on the other end of the VPN tunnel must be authenticated before the communications path is considered secure. Now, there are three data origin authentication methods, pre-shared keys, RSA signatures, and RSA encrypted nonces. Pre-shared keys. Here, a secret key value is entered into each peer manually. This key is then used to authenticate the peer. If the keys match, we know we are talking to the correct router. In other words, that router is now authenticated. With RSA signatures, we exchange digital certificates to authenticate the peer. We do this with RSA key pairs, public and private keys. What one key encrypts, the other key can decrypt. Now, how does this work with authentication? Very simply. First, know that the private key is kept very secure, but the public key can be given to anybody. Now, if I encrypt some message with my private key and you decrypt it successfully with the public key, you can be absolutely certain that I sent the message. You just authenticated me. Okay, now if you encrypt, encrypted something with my public key, who in the entire galaxy can decrypt that specific message? Only me. RSA encrypted nonces allow RSA to be used in a random fashion. We don't have to manually set up passwords. A nonce is nothing more than a random number generated by each peer. These numbers are then encrypted and exchanged between peers. We decrypt using the correct key and send back the result encrypted with the other key. If the numbers match when they get back, we are sure we know who we are talking to.